Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Alan. My name is Generation Tech. In our last video, we talked about why the Empire would still be using clones 14 years after the last clones were made on Kamino. We took a look at a bunch of these shots in the trailer that featured clone troopers, and a lot of you guys mentioned how this could be a flashback, and I think that's a really big possibility. It's probably winter in this scene, and the shots are grayed out and very muted, because just like in real life, there's no color in the past, obviously. Also, if you take a look at this shot here, this most likely is actor Gary Beetle, aka Clem Andor's father, and we all know that Clem is already dead by the time the Andor series starts. Take me up Rick's Road and hang me in the square. Isn't that where they hung your father? We also see Andor directly after that scene with Clem, and it's done with the same color correction. It seems like this is Andor in the flashback as well. Notice how he doesn't look that much younger. We're never really told when the dad dies. It could be 10 years, it could be five years ago, or maybe even less, one or two years ago. Either way, it still means that these clones are gonna be a lot older than we remember them to be, but they'll still be young enough to be capable fighters. It just makes a lot of sense that the Empire wouldn't just throw away these clones. The main reason that the Empire stopped the cloning programs to begin with was related to the cost of their production and not their maintenance. And so the existing clones that were ready for action were already paid for by the previous government. Even for a faction as wasteful as the Empire, it'd be really stupid to just get rid of really excellent troops. Right before their homeworld, the Camino was destroyed, we see young clone cadets, probably the newest batch, is being marched off for further training. Uh, that's presuming that they're not actually being lied to and secretly being turned into protein paste bars for their brothers to eat as combat rations. I'm not going to completely rule that out because Star Wars can be unpleasantly nasty if you look in the right places, but uh... We'll still be soldiers, won't we? Again, most likely not going to happen. And let's be honest, guys, uh, bringing the clones back would be something that a lot of fans would love to see. And I know Andor's not about fan service, but when it does dip back into the lore, it does so very naturally. And right now, they actually have an excellent opportunity to bring back one of the most popular things in all of Star Wars, the clones. Now, today I want to talk more about cloning in the post-Galactic Republic period. I think there's a real possibility that not only were the Empire using clone troopers all across the galaxy pretty late into the game, and sir, sure every viable clone is mobilized. There's even a small possibility that the Empire continued creating more clone troopers of some kind in the Emperor's secret cloning facility on Wayland. What exactly is Wayland? Well, let's get back into the lore. Do you guys remember what happened at the end of the Bad Batch shortly after Kamino was destroyed? Do you guys remember what happened to the most important Kaminoan? And no, I'm not talking about Prime Minister Lamassu. A scientist I have use for. A politician. I do not. Yeah, Chief Medical Scientist Nala say primary engineer for the Clone Trooper program is taken away by Vice Admiral Rampart. That's the guy we talked about in our previous episode as the person in charge of Project War Mantle, the replacement program for the clones. He'll be responsible for creating the precursor to the Stormtrooper program, the TK Trooper program. Now, why would someone like Vice Admiral Rampart be interested in a cloner like Nala Say? After all, he's been the main enemy, a very cordial enemy, mind you, to the Kaminoans and their cloning project. It's because of him that the Kaminoans lost their contract with the Empire and are now completely out of business. It's also because of him directly that their home planet was now lying in ruins and being blockaded. Despite all this, I don't think Vice Admiral Rampart had anything personal against the Dolphinkin. He actually was impressed by Nalase's work and sees her worthy as a cloner. I think it's very possible that Rampart is creating a contingency for his own plan by having someone very skilled at cloning like Nala Say on his roster. We also have to remember that Nala Say has her own contingency plan once she realized that conscripts and volunteers were going to replace the clone trooper, she began gathering all of her research and medical assistance and making an exit plan. Nalase had a lot of skills. Remember, she was responsible for mutating the DNA of Clone Force 99, and she had plans to create an even more superior Clone Force, but because the original FET DNA used by the Kaminoans had degraded somewhat, she needed access to the pure stuff, and only Boba Fett and Omega had that pure DNA. Now, Nalase was smart. She understood that the Clone Trooper program was very successful and that there would be plenty of different clients that would want to buy her work, but that was the scope and limit to her thinking because she's not really a political monster. So she missed this whole entire possibility that the Empire would never let her leave. The Empire is not like the Republic. We have empowered them to our own detriment. I fear they will destroy us 
rather than allow this operation to continue. So at the end of the Bad Batch, Nalase is captured or coerced, I guess, by Vice Admiral Rampart to join the Imperial facility, the research facility on the planet of Wayland. This world should be very exciting to hear for fans of the expanded universe legends and of course Thrawn. You see, the world of Wayland is where the Empire would build a massive secret warehouse and amongst the many things hidden there were what's known as Spardi cloning cylinders. During the Clone Wars in Legends, uh, Palpatine realized that the Kaminoan cloning program was becoming a problem. Not only did these clones take nine to 10 years to make and were extremely expensive per unit, they were also being trained by Mandalorians and mercenaries and being led into combat by Jedi. These influences on the clones made them more individualistic and more alive. This is exactly the opposite of what Emperor Palpatine wanted. I mean, take a look at the clone troopers. They have helmets on, they have designation numbers, they don't even have names. The idea was to create a robotic force. He didn't want to have like very individualistic clone troopers with painted armor speaking Mand Mandalorian. I mean, that was the exact opposite. So Emperor Palpatine created a contingency, as he always does, and he contacts Arcanin Microtechnologies. Arcanian Microtechnologies could create a full-grown clone in just under a year using these Spartai cloning cylinders, 10 times faster than the Kaminoans could. Of course, there are trade-offs, though. I mean, the Spartai clones were really, really low quality. They used a technique called flash pushing, which is like flash training, but, uh, you know, condensed into a very short period of time. These Spartai clones were prone to suffering from clone madness, which usually made them psychotic and created friendly fire incidents. They're also generally a lot dumber. They were uh, less physically talented and less coordinated. They also just weren't able to think for themselves, which isn't exactly what you want in a modern military. We mentioned previously how the newest batches of clones in the Bad Batch seem very different from the first few generations. The defect squads got themselves a new recruit. I've always believed that there was a possibility that Palpatine was creating clones using an alternative method, which is creating these lesser clones. In Legends, the Spartai clones would quickly outnumber the regular first few generations of clones, and they were extremely, extremely loyal to Emperor Palpatine. The fact that Star Wars is bringing the planet of Wayland back into canon, and then they're bringing the skilled cloner Nala Se to the planet is no coincidence. She's definitely here to do more cloning. Now, obviously, Emperor Palpatine has other uh, intentions for cloning. He also wants to become immortal, essentially. He could also possess other bodies after his original one began to die. The idea here was to clone his body so that the vessel was relatively familiar. We also know that, that Baby Gogurt was wanted by the Emperor, and a cloner wearing the original Kaminoan scientist uniform was involved in the project, which means that it's very possible that this individual worked alongside Nalase. So it's possible that Nala Se is here to do cloning specifically for Emperor Palpatine and not a larger clone task force. But then again, why is Vice Admiral Rampart, who is in charge of designing the next generation of soldiers for the Empire, involved in this scenario? We know that in the second season of The Bad Batch, Vice Admiral Rampart will be working alongside Crosshair and the other clone units once again. If these clones take any casualties, they'll need new recruits to fill their losses. Remember, the TK troopers are still completely unproven, and the majority of the Imperial forces are still made out of clones. So it's good to have redundancies and replacements. Which goes back to my original point in my other video, that maybe in 5 BBY, when we see Andor, there'll still be more clones walking around at the unit level. This would really be a classic Palpatine move to always have contingencies on top of contingencies. In Legends, the problem with the clones was mainly that the Kaminoans would breed their own clone units and start a civil war against the Galactic Empire. That was actually enough to convince Emperor Palpatine that the clones could become a huge liability and be used against them. We have to remember that in Legends, the clones had several contingency orders baked into their control chips. It wasn't just follow Order 66, you also had stuff like Order 65, which said the following. In the event of either a majority in the Senate declaring the Supreme Commander to be unfit to issue orders, or the Security Council declaring him to be unfit to issue orders, and an authenticated order being received by the JR commanders shall be authorized to detain the Supreme Commander with lethal force if necessary, and command of the JR should fall to the acting chancellor until a successor is appointed or alternative authority identified as outlined in section six. And there were actually several other orders that involved deposing essentially Chancellor Palpatine. He placed all of this in here to more or less alleviate the Jedi suspicion about Order 66. 
Now in canon, we're not exactly sure if these extra orders exist. It's most likely that they don't. And so without these additional uh, problems built into the clones, it seems like the clones would be the perfect type of unquestioning and obedient soldier that an authoritarian leader like Emperor Palpatine would want. Combine that with their rapid development and their pretty low cost thanks to the Sparti cloning cylinders and you essentially have the perfect military force for the Emperor. It's also possible that Palpatine wants a skilled individual like Nala because of one specific type of cloning that is incredibly hard to achieve and that is the cloning of force sensitive individuals. This might be why the Empire is seeking Gogurt during the Mandalorian, and especially going after his high midichlorian count blood. In order to crack this puzzle of cloning force sensitive individuals, they need more than just a normal scientist, they need a cloning artist. Someone who is capable of creating clones as unique as the mutated clone Force 99. I would like to mention that there is also a real world reason why Disney would bring back the clone troopers. Do you notice a trend in what Disney's done recently? Aside from the live action films and the movies, they've also tested the waters by releasing a seventh season of The Clone Wars more than six years after that show ended. They also made another animated series called The Bad Batch, which focuses directly on a bunch of clones. This show has been renewed for a second season. And what did people freak out about during the Kenobi series when it was launched? An old clone begging for change. You see, Disney is a business, and right now business says that Millennials and Generation Z make up the lion's share of their viewership on Disney+. Plus. These are kids who grew up during the prequel era, and they played with clone trooper action figures and battle droids growing up. And so bringing back the clones is not only a great idea from a lore standpoint, it's also a pretty good business decision. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you think um, about my theory about the Empire making more clones. Let me know if I missed anything. Also, if, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy.